At least it's cheap at half the price. So both of these players in need of a win, I think for Ricky Walden it's pretty much imperative given that he's played a couple of matches so far and lost them both. Not quite so important for Ben Wollaston but a victory nevertheless would be very welcome indeed. He started off with a 3-1 win over Mark Williams, making breaks of 99 and then 101 to finish up, launched by a fluke. But then in his second match, he was beaten 3-1 by Joe Perry. Not that losing your first three matches is a death knell. We saw that in Group 4. Ali Carter, after the first day of competition, was very low in spirit. He'd played three, lost three, thought he was on his way out. Next day, though, he won two matches, just scraped into the playoffs, and then won the group, playing very nicely indeed, to overcome first Jed Trump in the semi-finals, and then Sean Murphy in the final. But if Walden does lose this, he would be walking on somewhat shaky ground. That's okay. No harm done. Very nice pot indeed, and a couple of kisses have given Walden a chance to pot the black. Not easy using the rest, far from it. Now, could he make the kind of start to this match that he made Eight. this morning against Martin Gould? First frame of the group. He made 140 total clearance. Might have thought then he had a chance of winning the £500 Nine. highest break prize in the group. But it was soon eclipsed when he sat out this afternoon a 144 from Mark Williams. The one common link between both of these matches so far, he's won the first frame but sadly lost the next three. Seven. Oh, 
Oh, and that's the kind of Whoa. bread and butter routine black that shouldn't go astray. Eight. Nine. Wollaston knows what it takes to beat Walden. They've played six times previously. It is three wins each. Although Walden did win their most recent encounter, this season in fact, 4-2 in the last 32 of the Indian Open. Had runs of 91, 71 and 61 in that match. And for what it's worth, Walden also prevailed in the only match they've played in the Championship League in the past. It was in Group 4 in 2016. Walden won 3-1, helped by breaks of 106 and 95. Too close to the cushion for comfort here, because he didn't get hold of the cue ball as he wanted to. Not the zip back. He was looking for. Good recovery pot though. 23. But. Thirty-eight. Nicely done. Off a couple of cushions with the cue ball. In behind the black. As the break now reaches 46. 46. Still not quite out of the woods yet. 54. The break goes to 54, the lead to 37. Well, he doesn't need the two awkward reds close to the 
left hand side cushion Clearly the red closest to the pink will pass that into the middle. Sixth. And so Wall Wollaston looking really good to take a 1-0 lead here. 61. And let me quickly tell you that Judd Tremp already is 1-0 up on Joe Perry on the other table. Tremp thus far in this group showing no adverse reaction to his very disappointing defeat in the semi-finals of the Masters at Alexandra Palace on Saturday. He was 5-2 up against Kyron Wilson, lost 6-5. I just wondered what the reaction would be in this group. So far, the reaction has been very professional and very positive. And professional and positive are two adjectives that apply to this break from Wollaston. We could be about to see his second century of the group. Ninety one. Good stuff, this. Playing with excessive amounts of side, Wollaston missed the pink, but not before he bought up a three-figure contribution. first well it was a, a plausible idea but not quite the execution the one thing very much in Walden's favour here though is that although he's left a very simple opening red queuing over the red as Wollaston is means that positional choices are severely limited
sometimes you just have to accept your fate, play conservatively and wait. Bravo. So I think it's fair to say Walden got away with one there. He's had a strange old season. Not really ignited. We know how good he can be. Just before Christmas, though, I think there were very encouraging signs. Last 16 at the Northern Ireland Open, followed by last 16 at the UK Championship as he, he pots that red. What? And also quarter-final at the Scottish Open. Plus, he's qualified for the German Masters next week. So for Walden, I think, generally, things are on the up. He won't. One. Last season, of course, was blighted by a back injury. Yes, to qualify for the German Masters, Walden beat Bunyarit Katikun from Thailand 5-1, and then Ashley Hugill from England 5-2. So towards the tail end of 2017 and right at the start of 2018, he's picking up more than useful ranking points. Well, the red closest to the cue ball is blocking Wollaston's path to another. He might otherwise pot. The red down towards bulk, I don't believe, will pot past the yellow. So all in all, that could have been a whole lot worse for Walden. A whole lot. You know, he's done really well there. Cutting back into a blind pocket under any circumstance is never easy. And that was the extreme version of that particular shot. Six. Twelve. 
not the location of the white he wanted. Hampered queuing. Awkward queuing. Not the easiest pot either. But Wollaston dug another one out. 30. All the way towards the pocket, I thought, and I think Wollaston did as well, that the red might be catching too much of the far jaw, but it went in. The visit continues. I think that was the classic case, the recurring case at all levels of snooker where a player was more concerned with the positional implications of the shot and maybe his concentration divided. He lost sight of the fact that you've got to pot it. One. Not the best from Walden though, was it? Not the best by any means. Well, playing a shot like that over such an expanse of green bays, you are relying on the table to run true, and it did not let Ricky Walden down. Eight. A fine performer at his best, Walden. Two one. When he gets into a particular rhythm. He's a joy to watch. You do not win three world ranking events as he's done without being particularly skilled. Try to flick into the two reds close together there. Yeah. Didn't succeed, but at least he's got the the red down the cushion now. Not that this could ever be described as easy.
Well, he's successful in obtaining the cannon this time. 35. And then, pretty much the story of his day. After the cannon, the red goes astray. It's been a struggle, really, with the odd interlude of brilliance. Six. Seven. Nowhere. So the frame still very much in the balance, just four points the difference. Well, what a super pot that was. Very little to aim for. Very little. So, on hardly any margin of error whatsoever. The red went in. Walden is on the pink. If the pink disappears, the path to that pocket is opened up. And the path to this pocket was always open. Now Walden here, keen to hold on the pink. Because when this goes in, he'll arrive on the colours with an 18-point advantage. Meaning he needs only yellow and green to leave Wollaston requiring a snooker. The awkward brown, 14. not required. Just checking the scoreboard. Confirmation he's 23 in front with 22 on. He'll be minding his P's and Q's though here because with the skill set of the professional player, gaining one snooker is very much within their capabilities. Well, snookers surely are a, a moot point now because the brown has disappeared.
from his chair. Not the case, but it's over now. Nicely done by Ricky Walden, in need of a morale boost, and that provided it. So he has a frame on. Ben Wollaston Ben Williston won the first comprehensively with a break of 103. Ricky Walden replies by edging the second on the green. One of those instances where Wollaston, even though he could see a red directly, Morgan, thought there was better value in just tickling into the pack off one cushion. The only problem was he didn't judge the angle correctly, and it's a free seven points for Walden. A bit more. by the way, that despite the scare, Judd Trump did win the second frame. He's doubled his advantage over Joe Perry. He leads 2-0. Two aspects to that shot, obviously the pot, which he knocked in nicely enough. The second one was judging the angle of white into pack and then the reaction of it. It would be an absolute stretch to say he's ideal on the pink, but he is on it in some way. but not the way he can pot the pink. I thought he might perhaps, yeah, that's what he's doing. Just going off the green, put the cue ball close to the ball cushion One. and bide his time. When it comes to getting the better of a tactical duel, it's a tried and tested formula. Get your opponent consistently under that cushion. 
and you're on to a winner. Foul. And that was one of those cases where going in off wasn't the worst case scenario. Had the cue ball jangled around in the jaws of that pocket and stayed down this end of the table, it might have been a little more expensive for Wollaston. OK, Walden has got an opening red. He can knock in, but good queuing required. Nowhere near. Well, as they say, a pretty good white again. You can't escape the conclusion here that the first mistake might be quite expensive. The reds are pre-developed. Everything in the open. Fertile country for a big break. And Wollaston felt as though it was worth taking on the risk of what was a very tough pot. Would you believe it? He walked back to his chair, did Wollaston, sat down and expected to be there for quite some time, getting comfy. And he's right back in the thick of it. One. The ultimate goal, of course, of these two is to become the fourth Englishman to win a group in the Championship League so far this year.
60. Mark Selby winning Group 2, Karen Wilson Group 3, Ali Carter winning Group 4. The only player thus far who's breaking the English monopoly on places in the winners group is China's Zhao Yulong, who won group number one. Bit. Quite a, a compact Q action is Ben Wollaston. One he's made all his own. You wouldn't call it classical, but it's certainly functional. That's it. Running side, a couple of cushions. Forty four. And really now, Wollaston will be thinking to himself, he should win the frame at this visit. No ifs, buts or maybes. I don't think he had quite a full pocket there to go for. The last thing he wanted to do was overcut the red and catch the other one on the way through. That's why he caught the, the near jaw with that shot and that's why he's slightly short on the black. And the knock on, with the kiss on the pink, he snookered himself on the red he played for. So, 56 points the lead for Wollaston, but 67 still there. And 
was. 68. Walden by no means out of the frame just yet. Can give you a quick update from the other table. Joe Trump has lost his second frame of the day. He's not going to whitewash Joe Perry because Perry is commandingly won the third frame. So Trump's lead reduced to 2 1. What a super red that was from Wollaston. Not a lot of pressure on it because he knew with the angle he was potting, it was basically a shot to nothing. And I suppose, although the in-off was unlucky, potting a red and doing that, OK, Walden only gets four points. So now the equation, he's 52 behind with 59 on. Still in there with a shout. But should Wollaston choose to take on this red across the top cushion, it is now frame ball. Well, he played it cleverly, knew that the black would block the red mo more than likely. The only problem with playing it at crisp pace like that, it made the pot more difficult. So there was definitely a trade-off there. And I think, all in all, you can't really fault Wollaston's thought process. On the wish list for Wollaston here, a couple of really awkward reds and a couple of really awkward colours. If he could engineer that, his position would be even more powerful than it already is.
Well, inadvertently, Walden has done what Wollaston wanted to do. Knock a red safe. Mind you here, everything's safe. Now, I've seen him do that on many occasions, Ben Wollaston. That's one of his assets for me. He does it too often to be a coincidence. He's very good at seeing an extremely thin edge when he's playing safe. For a while, Wollaston has been on the, the threshold of winning frame three. But still not there. And the little flick on the red means the one closest to the black spot will pot. tell you that although he's not quite finished yet Judd Trump is going to beat Joe Perry by three frames to one far too far ahead in the fourth frame to stand any chance of being caught and so Judd Trump 60 steams to the top of the group Seventy. See four. What a potential steal this could be. <coughs> okay, the brown is not ideally placed, but apart from that. Walden's got every right to fancy his chances. And maybe here. An opportunity to rectify the situation with the brown. 32. It is official, by the way, now. Judd Trump has beaten Joe Perry, so he's played 11 frames today, has Trump. He's won nine of them, lost just two. Yep, brown into open play. Now, Walden... 34. Very much installed as the favourite.
And if you recall, Wollaston should have won the frame, but that positional cannon went astray. He ran out of position when he should have been very much in it. And he's been made to pay, ultimately. 41. In what could be a swing frame, not only for this match, but also for the group as a whole. Still, though, Walden has to pop the last three balls. Fifty-two. Fifty-nine. It was looking decidedly tricky for Ricky. He will be sure to be in the semi-finals tomorrow. Keep on. Well, Walden must be full of beans after that. It was uh, a great escape. Conversely, Wollaston will be feeling as though he's been robbed. And just how often do you see it where a player steals a frame from nowhere and then almost immediately at the start of the next frame gets in scoring again. In this instance, Wollaston could have left a much easier launch red. Well, that was a very nice kiss indeed. Much earlier on today, when he was up against Mark Williams, Wollaston had an absolutely stonking fluke at the start of the fourth frame went on to make a break of 101 to clinch 3-1 a 3-1 victory now his positional fortune there to get onto the black after the first red that didn't compare with the fluke but it was lucky nevertheless Sixty. Twenty four. Are we going to see something here we haven't seen yet all day? I.e. a match that goes to the wire. We've had 13 completed contests thus far. 32. Should I say? We've had nine completed contests so far. Eight of them 3-1. 1-3-0. 33. 
Well, from here, really, Wollaston should win this frame at one visit, although we were saying exactly the same thing towards the tail end of frame three. Now, under normal circumstances, he wouldn't be too bothered about that positional shot because he could go up for the blue. But he doesn't want the blue in this instance. He wants to remain exclusively red-black. Sixty-four. Sixty-five. Sensible. Winning the frame always a higher priority than making a maximum. Seventh. Seventy-one. Good response, this. Eight. It's not that Ben Wollaston has never made a one-four-seven. Of course, he's had plenty of them in practice. And he has had one in professional competition as well. The 110th recorded, by the way, in December 2014 against Joe Steele in the Lisbon Open. And now he's got the opportunity to make his third century of the day. And second in this match. 94. Well done, Ben Williston. Very good scoring. Now, if he can pop the last two reds with two blacks and all the colours, it's a 1-4-5, which would eclipse Mark Williams' 1-4-4 as the highest break of the group. A 145 would also equal the highest break of the entire Championship League 
this season. Ryan Day was responsible for that number in group number one. 118. One hundred and twenty. Oh, what a pity. Chance early in the fourth matters most in the contest between Wollaston and Walden. Just one footnote on the Wollaston century in the previous frame. As Walden, you would think, gets away with that. That was the, the seventh century of this group. We're not at the halfway point yet, as you know. The highest number of centuries in any one group in this year's Championship League, 14 in Group 4, so that record might be under threat. What's also under threat, Ricky Walden's continued participation in the Championship League after this group, should he lose this match. He would be on a very sticky wicket indeed coming in tomorrow. Didn't plan on the kiss. Again, though, could have been much more damaging. This mid-range pot, long-range pot from Walden, requires very good queuing and a stiff nerve as well. Thinks it's a little too risky with so much on the line. And you can't really blame him. Had Walden won his first two matches, the shot selection there might have been different. But he's at the stage now where he can't afford to lose another.
Well, whoops. Not too bad if all of the reds had been down the top end of the table with a lone red up there towards the bulk line available to the middle pocket. That could be a case of ouch for Wollaston. Jed Trump really is flying. He was 30 nil down in the first frame against Mark Williams, but with a sizable break, he has taken the opener. Trump one, Williams nil. Stayed down on that shot. Not quite sure whether he cut it enough. It did catch the near jaw. Sometimes that's a worry. In this case, though, the red felt. Position on the pink could not have been any better. And the break continues. 90. Not bad there from Walden. Never easy when the cue ball and the object ball are so close together to judge how a, a ball is going to screw back. He didn't get quite far enough up the table to be ideal, but I think he has got just a, a marginal angle on the blue. Even if he's dead straight, he can always follow through and leave himself a mid-range pot. Or indeed screw back and leave himself a mid-range pot. C5. This time though, the angle on the blue is just what he wanted. Another good pot, not as easy as it looked, especially in a decider. Tell you what, though, Wollaston must be getting increasingly worried. Bear in mind, he's had two centuries in this match and could still be staring at defeat. See not.
spot. Six. Dark clouds gathering for Wollaston. It really does look as though both of these two will have identical records at the end of this match, i.e. played three, won one, lost two. If that is the case, the only difference will be that Wollaston has one more match Today, he stays on this table to take on David Gilbert. Whereas the work for Ricky Walden today will be over. He returns tomorrow to take on yeah. Joe Perry in our first match on table two in the morning at 11 o'clock. Sixth. So 64 in front, 67 on. This is frame ball. One visit snooker is always impressive, but particularly so in a decider. 67. <coughs> and the only question now, are we going to see the third century of the match? 68. Seventy-five. Seventy-six. Apart from a somewhat scrappy second frame, which Walden edged on the green, it's been really good stuff. Eighty-three. Wollaston, 103 in the first. 68 in the third, but he didn't win it because Walden cleared up with 59 to snatch the verdict on the black. Wollaston back with 120 in the fourth frame, and now this from Walden when the chips are really down. It's enough. Ninth. Quite tall, Ricky Walden. Always had good reach. And that certainly came in handy there. 96. Turn up. Victory completed in style. 102. There is no doubt about it, this victory, and particularly the way it's been achieved, will see Walden reinvigorated for the morrow when he comes back and tries to claim one of those playoff places. A high standard of snooker and two centuries from Wollaston did not prevent him losing. Instead, 29. 